Let's talk about foreign aid. Uh, we spend 0.5% of our national income on foreign aid, giving countries uh, in need lots of money to help them with various poverty projects. Uh, we expect to spend 10 billion quid next year. Uh, it emerged uh, last week, that, or was it earlier this week, that uh, part of our uh, generosity will go to China this year, 71 million quid to help them improve their rice growing techniques. I'm not kidding. Uh, now, given these circumstances, you think it's time uh, to cut back on the foreign aid bu budget. And indeed, we are going to. This elicited great protests from all sorts of Tories, uh, including a baroness. I can't even remember her name. Oh, yeah, she, she quit, didn't she? Was yeah, it Baroness yeah, yeah. Bug, isn't it, or something? She quit yesterday in high dudgeon. Yeah. Andrew Mitchell, who I very much admire, uh, he's in a fury about it. Yeah. David Cameron emerged from the woodwork yesterday to say yeah. this is all about our Britain's standing around the world uh, we have to do this well I just don't think this is the time for national virtue signalling uh, we've got a lot of problems and splashing 10 billion quid uh, on Chinese rice growing seems to me to be something of a mistake uh, let's talk to someone who knows all about government uh, former Conservative Defence Minister Sir Gerald Howarth uh, good evening Sir Gerald uh, good evening, Kevin. Good evening, Ash. Good evening. Uh, you caught the gist of my tirade then. Uh, is it at the time uh, when we should be, for example, handing 71 million quid to China to help it improve its rice and apple growing techniques? And is it time uh, for us to cut back drastically on the money we send abroad uh, for good causes because we've got enough trouble at home? Absolute absurdity. The fact is that we are spending not 0.5, we're spending 0.7% on overseas aid. That's 0.7% of our national income. That translates to 15,000 million pounds. And it's important that uh, your listeners should know that of that 15 billion pounds, 5 billion is not spent direct by the Department for International Development, now of course part of the Foreign Office, but it is goes to international agencies like the United Nations and the yep. EU yep. to spend on behalf of the British taxpayer. So mm. 10 billion goes uh, uh, from direct from the United Kingdom for programs that we support. But we're in a dreadful situation. In 2010, when we came into office, uh, at that time, the nation was spending 8 billion uh, pounds on overseas aid. As I say, it's now gone up nearly twice that amount it is completely absurd absurd sending money uh, to china or indeed for that matter to india which has a space program that's right yeah. yes well so does china and, and, you now. Know, yeah. I, I led the charge i led the charge in the house in 2015 when the liberal democrat mp michael moore produced a private member's bill to enshrine in law that we should uh, ring fence overseas aid unlike any other department including the, uh, the health department, that we should make an exception of the overseas aid department and uh, ring fence uh, expenditure uh, on that. And I was told at the time, oh, no, you know, we, we, if we didn't do this, we would be setting a poor example to the rest of the world. Absolute rubbish. The United mm -hmm. States spends 0.18, less than 0.2%, mm -hmm. less than a third of what we are spending in terms of uh, percentage it hasn't had any effect on encouraging other people to spend i'm not against overseas aid helping some of the poorest but we're in dire straits at the moment we're borrowing 400 billion pounds just this year alone adding to our national debt of already two trillion pounds mm. we can't afford it and it doesn't end up with the poorest does it i mean a lot of it especially the stuff that goes through the eu and the un goes to nefarious sort of you know people suddenly ends up in dodgy bank accounts and things like that doesn't it well, Ash, interesting you should say that, because in February this year, three economists apparently found that billions of pounds was ending up in tax havens. And they reckon something like a sixth of uh, overseas aid, not necessarily just from the United Kingdom, but from elsewhere, ends up in tax havens. We know that there are corrupt uh, and incompetent governments around the world, but this is British taxpayers' money. And, and you know, so many politicians who support overseas aid, puff their chests out, say, oh, you know, this is marvellous. We're being really generous. Why aren't they being generous with other people? Other no. people's money, not with their own money. That's if what I wanted to say, uh, Sir Gerald. Uh, my, my confusion yeah. there... Okay. 
So, sorry, sorry to interrupt. My confusion there was, of course, we were spending 0.7 and today or well, yesterday it was announced so we're going to cut back to 0.5, which will take us from uh, t uh, 15 billion to 10 billion. Uh, now, this decision, uh, which, uh, as I said earlier, was it seemed to me under the circumstances eminently sensible. In fact, I don't think it was enough. Uh, elicited uh, the resignation of Foreign Office Minister Baroness Sugg in a fury. Uh, David Cameron emerged from the woodwork outside his house to denounce this disgraceful decision to say, uh, you know, this is all about Britain standing around the world. Well, I would say this is not a time for national virtue signalling. But what confuses me is uh, this is not a reason to vote Conservative. You know, vote Conservative will take your tax money and give it to China so they grow nice rice. Uh, I don't understand why so many Tories consider foreign aid to be so sacrosanct. I entirely agree with you. I put in my election manifesto in 2015, the last election which I stood, uh, that I was uh, totally opposed to uh, this level of uh, overseas aid. The money should be spent on defence and our and our police forces. But interesting, you mentioned Baroness Sugg. Well, of course, Baroness Sugg was right hand lady to David Cameron, and I had I had you know, face to face discussions with David Cameron. He feels passionately about this, and what he said to me was, "Look, Gerald." If we don't invest uh, upstream to intervene where uh, there are real problems of poverty, which then spill over into social unrest, etc., we'll then have to intervene downstream through your department, the Ministry of Defence, militarily. But I said, Prime Minister, the greatest one in the world, I don't buy the argument. And I still don't buy the argument that yeah, David Cameron that. has. Been I like him enormously. He's a great man, was a great Prime Minister, but... I disagreed with him fundamentally on this. And uh, I just do not see the justification for spending this money at this level uh, in the current circumstance. We're borrowing all this money. So effectively what we're doing, Kevin, is we're borrowing the money from the financial institutions uh, and then lending it out saying, aren't we wonderful and generous That's people? Madness, it's the bankers' it? money, not ours. Do you think, uh, Sir Gerald, that uh, to uh, kind of try to come up with a theory about why so many of these Tories are so keen on foreign aid. Uh, Andrew Mitchell, again, another man who I greatly admire, uh, he's a, a fanatical about it. Um, I think they're from the live aid generation that giving money to Ethiopia mm. and other countries is in their sort of generational DNA. Well, yeah, I mean, Andrew happens to be a very great friend of mine. In fact, uh, uh, he and, uh, and his wife and uh, my wife and I were on holiday with mutual friends, mutual parliamentary friends in um, Ceylon earlier this year. Uh, and, and Andrew does feel passionate about this. But then, of course, he was uh, Secretary of State for uh, for DFID. Mm. Um, but I think it is a fundamentally flawed policy. There is no evidence that other countries are following suit. And oh. even at 0.5 percent, we've hugely out we are hugely outperforming if it's um, a virtue to do this as people like john major claim that it is we're hugely outperforming him under his uh, stewardship we were contributing 0.3 percent so uh i think that uh, what rishi uh, sunak the chance of exchequer said yesterday was absolutely right that until we've sorted out our financial problems at home we have to draw in our Hortons and overseas aid is somewhere where we should do that and uh, I think it's absolutely right and problem I think also if I may say this aid has got to be much better targeted and yes more transparent and in that let me tell you that we have a champion in no less a person than Sarah Champion who is the <laughs> Labour MP for Rotherham and chairman of the overseas aid uh, select committee and she has called for greater transparency she happens to be on the other side of the argument from me but i do know her she's a friend she's a great lady um but she's calling for greater transparency this is taxpayers money and the british taxpayer is entitled to see where that money is going now before you go kevin can i just say Please. three cheers for what you said about our fishing we ain't no. giving up our fishermen to monsieur barnier and if monsieur no. barnier doesn't deal on the basis that Lord Frost has um, suggested to him, then push off, no deal. Yeah. You are not going to browbeat the nation, which in Margaret Thatcher's words, uh, or rather what, what Margaret Thatcher, whom I work for, said, who are these European nations? 
They're countries we either rescued or defeated. Now yeah. telling us what to do. Yeah. Unacceptable. Absolutely. Well, listen, perhaps we'll get you back on next week when we see what happens uh, after Barnier's ultimatum. Uh, I think it's, as I said, I think it's time to say au revoir. Don't yeah, you push us around. Uh, Sir Gerald, always a pleasure. Uh, and let's reconvene after Brexit. <laughs> Take care. Uh, Gerald uh, Howarth there, former Conservative Defence yeah. Minister. He's Ash. I'm Kev. This is Talk Radio.